Greg Duncan, he's going to be talking to us about Turner's Fairbanks project. So what is the Turner Fairbanks project? So we're paving from Turner, uh, Florida to Fairbanks, Alaska, right? No, I don't know if there is a Turner, Florida, but, so don't, don't check me on that. So Morgan Kessler is the uh, project sponsor. He's asked us to look at what's the state of the practice of using recycled asphalt pavement in pavement preservation projects. And uh, we ask a question during the uh, bid process for this project and specifically thin lift asphalt or hot mix asphalt using wrap was excluded. So uh, this project is, is evaluating and uh, developing sort of a state of the practice for how are folks using recycled asphalt pavements in chip seals, slurry seals, microsurfacing, uh, and other uh, any other applications like that. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here to talk about the project. Uh, it is still ongoing, so you'll see some uh, next steps, or we'll talk about some next steps as we go through there. But uh, for me, I'm happy to be back in a place where you understand the words coming out of my mouth, for the most part anyway. Um, most of the places that I talk nowadays, uh, I almost need two interpreters, one from English to their version of English and then from what I speak to, to English. So uh, two interpreters. The project objectives extent here, but it was basically to document case studies and best practices, what are the testing costs, specifications, any of those things that may differ uh, in using recycled asphalt pavements in these treatments. So as we looked at the tasks and how they wanted the project to be conducted, there's the uh, task four that uh, is really doing the construction or the uh, research effort and developing a draft report. There also follows a webinar to summarize the, the findings and so that will be uh, scheduled here shortly. We're looking to do um, a webinar, so you'll all be invited to that. I know uh, you can uh, have more of your staff attend uh, with you there and, and uh, see what's happening. And we'll be developing a tech brief uh, in the standard FHWA format. So to summarize those uh, issues that are prominent. What we found uh, during the literature review and in in uh, looking at what the state of the practice was, you know, a lot of these treatments are maintenance treatments. And maintenance guys, I learned at the Tennessee DOT, uh, maintenance folks are really good at getting the job done. Uh, you give them a task, uh, not too much instruction, and they go knock it out. They get the job done, right? Uh, they're not real good at coming behind that and documenting what they did, why they did it, uh, what the nuances were and what purchasing rules they uh, ignored while they were doing that. I see some chuckles back there. But what we did find was a hotbed of information out of Southern California that had been uh, summarized in their pavement preservation magazines out there. Uh, and we also found a research report from the New Mexico DOT. And so uh, that's, that's really where we focused our efforts. Uh, we also learned that NCAT had a test section down on their test track of uh, uh, wrap uh, chip seals. I uh, talked to my friend Scott Metcalf with Ergon, who is based there in Southern California, had a lot of information and pointed me to some other folks uh, that were doing this. Doug Ford with Pavement Coatings Incorporated and Don Matthews, I think Don's going to be speaking to you here on Wednesday, Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday. Uh, they were a big help in summarizing what was happening there. Uh, we talked to some folks with Los Angeles County, California, San Bernardino County, California, uh, Mike Hemsley with Paragon Technical Services there in uh, Jackson, Mississippi was a, a big help explaining uh, what their practices were and what they were doing with the technology and some folks in the New Mexico DOT as well. And so what, what were the early findings? Now, just like trying to use recycled asphalt pavement in hot mix asphalt applications. You have to really have a good handle on uh, what your gradation is, what your properties of the material are. But the question remains, uh, how do you characterize that asphalt that's on those aggregate particles, 
which most of these processes that we're talking about are uh, an aggregate substitution kind of process, chip seals, slurry seals, microsurfacing, and does that asphalt on the aggregate particles uh, contribute to performance? Does it get reincorporated into that blend? So it was back to that whole um, argument in the, in the asphalt industry for years, is this a black rock or is this a commodity that's carrying asphalt into my hot mix material, right? So it's all about characterizing that kind of material. Why use wrap? Why is it even being talked about? I mean, because nobody has a surplus of wrap, right? So we have a surplus of wrap materials out there. States limit the amount of wrap that you can put in your hot mix asphalt. Some want higher limits, some want lower limits. But there's typically that discussion of do we allow uh, 15 to 25 to 35 to 45 to 55 to how much, how much wrap can we put in the material? So certainly if we're looking at a material that may be con, uh, considered a waste material, if we're not able to use all that we have, if it's a waste material, certainly somebody might be willing to part with that material at a, at a reduced cost, right? Uh, most state DOTs pay people to mill it off the highway, and so then it goes and sits on a yard somewhere for oh, four or five days, right? And then it's ready to be reused again. Perhaps there's a cost savings. Uh, then there's the whole idea of environmental sustainability. We need to reuse what we have. We need to limit the amount of new aggregates that are being required by our processes. And those aggregate resources are getting more and more scarce. So that's what we found, particularly in uh, San Bernardino, in New Mexico, uh, the aggregate sources were, you know, it was not unusual to haul aggregates 100 miles for a chip seal project. So that's what was happening in some places. Uh, what do we find as differences in using wrap in these techniques, in these treatments and technologies? Uh, for chip seals, uh, folks were saying it's not really different. We're able to use uh, wrap chips uh, at about the same rate. We don't find any detrimental properties from using wrap in a chip seal, uh, and they perform similarly. Uh, and so the, uh, some folks even compared that to a uh, coated, a pre-coated aggregate. You know, some folks are doing that. The, you, you run the material through a hot mix plant, coat the, coat the aggregate, that removes the dust, but it also puts some sticky stuff on the rock so that the other sticky stuff sticks to it better. That, that makes sense, Heath? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and it was also a, uh, a visual thing. These, these roadways tend to stay black longer. So folks are uh, more accepting of that uh, from a, a contextual standpoint. In microsurfacing and slurry seals, uh, they found that the uh, asphalt emulsion, there wasn't as much required to coat those wrap coated or wrap aggregate particles as a virgin rock. So a crushed limestone, a crushed granite, whatever the, the source material, sandstone, whatever they were using for their uh, microsurfacing aggregate, uh, the wrap particles didn't have as much surface area, and so therefore there wasn't as much material required to coat those uh, discrete aggregate particles. Uh, and so they were finding a 1 to 2% reduction in virgin asphalt emulsion. So instead of 13.5, they were looking at 11.5, something like that. So they also found that the aggregate particles were not as reactive. And so the, the set time was increased using a wrap material. Um, so that might not be uh, surprising to you. And so as we did our uh, early uh, characterization and tried to find what we could through interviews and talking to folks, uh, we were permitted to go do some uh, detailed case study uh, scenarios. And so the first one that we uh, did was uh, went to the great state of Alabama, the uh, test track. I know Lee County just suffered a, a huge uh, storm event 
uh, thoughts and prayers go out to those folks. But this is in Opelika, Alabama at the NCAT test track. They had placed chip seals and these were hot applied crumb rubber modified binder with uh, aggregate placed on top. They did a side by side comparison. So if you look at, what's that say there? Uh, E7B, E7B begins right there. That is a section of pre-coated uh, aggregate. So they ran that through the hot mix asphalt plant, put about three quarters to 1% asphalt on it, uh, and then dropped that into the hot applied rubber modified binder. The E7A, the first section, the one I'm standing on here, uh, that is the uh, wrap chip material. And so the binders are the same, the application rates are the same. Um, and in CAT, you know the test track data is um, very thorough. And so we looked at uh, results of uh, friction, we looked at surface texture. Uh, the, the drawback is they only uh, loaded it for two years. And so while it was heavily loaded, you know, for a chip seal, you're, you're typically addressing or you're trying to um, address low to moderate severity surface texture issues. So raveling, uh, low intensity cracking, those sorts of things. And so two years of weathering and raveling and exposure to UV and all that sort of thing doesn't really put this uh, chip seal to, to its, through its paces. But what the NCAT data did show is that the wrap chips had a lower um, skid resistance than the pre-coated granite material that they were using as their control. And so in talking with Buzz, uh, where, where did that wrap come from? And he said, well, it came from East Alabama Paving Company. And, uh, you know, my, my days at the at the DOT, a lot of our wrap materials came from binder mixes, which were not required to be surface approved. So you had those coarse particles being uh, a part of a binder material or an intermediate layer material. And being a soft limestone, uh, certainly could understand some, some friction issues uh, perhaps showing up. The next case study, we went to Paragon Technical Services and met with Mike Hemsley and his staff there. Uh, so Paragon Technical Services uh, does uh, mixed designs for their clients. They, they uh, work with a, a prominent asphalt supplier mainly, and they uh, then service those clients in providing mixed designs certification. So they're, they're working on uh, all these different source aggregates that may be incorporated into these different treatments. So mainly microservice slurry seals uh, but they also um, do some tests with, uh, with chip seals uh, using the sweep test and some other uh, aggregate uh, source tests. Um, and they saw that using the standard ISSA mixed design practices were fairly uniformly applicable to a wrap chip seal or a wrap slurry or micro as compared to a virgin material. Um, there were some um, minor changes, but the wet track abrasion test, the loaded wheel tester, all performed very similar. The, the um, design criteria did not need to be nip manipulated or, or modified to incorporate wrap materials into, that, into those designs. Uh, and we also uh, noted the lower design emulsion contents, again, in those, those materials. They were achieving an optimum uh, you know, it's hard to have a control from a, uh, when you're looking at a, at a wrap source because you, you don't really know where specifically the aggregates came from. But for a general area, Mike was uh, willing to show us some uh, stock designs. And there was about a 2%, one and a half to 2% asphalt emulsion savings. And so immediately I said, oh, you're, you're buying less emulsion. That should be a cheaper, a cheaper product, right? You should get it for less per square yard than uh, if, you're, uh, if you're putting 2% more in it. Well, you know, there's a lot of factors to be considered. So I couldn't get a firm commitment that they could sell a wrap slurry cheaper than they could sell a 
uh, virgin aggregate slurry material. The New Mexico DOT, they had a, a uh, quite a different pavement preservation uh, package from what I experienced in Tennessee. Uh, in New Mexico, when they put coal planing or milling on a project, the state retains the wrap stockpiles. Uh, and either they give them to a contractor for uh, a hot mix project that follows or uh, they use them in their maintenance practices or, or something else, but they, they have to write a report because that was done with federal money. They have to write a report and provide that to FHWA on what, uh, what they did with those uh, surplus millings. And so uh, what they determined to be one of the most cost effective ways to use that material was as their chip seal aggregate. And why could, they, why could they use wrap as a chip seal aggregate? Okay, it's free. All right, that's, that's good. Yeah, they didn't have to haul that 100 miles to get it into that district. This was in the uh, District 6 area, which is the uh, western edge of the state, west of Albuquerque. Uh, what else? Where did, that, where did that wrap material come from? from asphalt projects, right? So what was the quality of that aggregate? What's it gotta be to be pre-approved to use in hot mix asphalt? It's gotta be pretty high quality aggregate, right Greg? I guess, okay. Go along with me, all right. Greg yawned and so I called on him. So those of you that are tired, just be aware, uh, house rules. Um, yeah, so they had, they had stockpiles of this high quality material out there and, and they said we could put this back on our road and it'll provide high quality, durable, aggregate uh, stone for our, our chip seals. Uh, and so they do have in-house chip seal crews that were using this material, but they didn't have a means to get it fractionated. So they hired someone to come in, turn their stockpiles of wrap into piles of wrap chips and piles of wrap fines. So uh, that was sort of the, the economical portion of this case study that um, was new for me. So they, they milled the material off using federal funds, then they hired a contractor to come in and fractionate it using federal funds, and then they paid their own crews with federal funds to, to do the pavement preservation project. So uh, very innovative, I thought. Um, they found, I, I did, uh, I asked and the New Mexico DOT agreed to go do some tests for me. They had some samples or some sections down for four years. They found no difference in their normal chip seal aggregate uh, skid resistance and their wrap material skid resistance. So uh, a little bit of a different finding there, uh, but it's encouraging. I also went to San Bernardino County uh, they also use chip seals as a heavy part of their uh, heavy part of their program. They experienced an issue where it's very scarce source aggregates to have delivered for their their chip seal project. So this was more of a conventional chip seal project where they hire someone to bring the chips to their project location, and they either deliver them right to the chip spreader the day that the material is being placed, or they stockpile it nearby and then. Uh, they run the truck back and forth to, uh, to feed the spreader. They found up to a 30% cost savings in, in permitting wrap to be an alternative material. And so for them, it was, you know, I'm skeptical whether this wrap material will perform as well as our virgin aggregates will. And so they, they worked with their neighbor, Los Angeles County, that was a little further along that path. Uh, they got convinced that uh, the material could last as long. So they were able to achieve a 30% cost savings uh, once they dove in and began to bid it as an alternate. Uh, I've mentioned Los Angeles County a couple of times. They came at it from a different standpoint. They said, we want to be sustainable. We want to we wanna be good stewards of the natural resources in our area. Uh, the quarries are not able to, there's a shortage of materials. They're either running out of materials or they're not getting permitted to open new quarries. So we have a finite material source. Uh, and so from a sustainability initiative, we want to use more recycled materials. 
worked with Van Truong in uh, Los Angeles County. They have um, at least five years of performance data to back up there is no difference between using a RAP uh, series of treatments versus virgin aggregate. Uh, and so what I, what I found in Los Angeles County is their typical treatment structure, they'll go into a neighborhood, the main neighborhood streets, they'll do uh, micro milling, then they'll apply a scrub seal, and then over the top of the scrub seal, they'll apply a slurry seal. And so they're, they're really doing, I consider that a Cadillac fix for a, for a neighborhood street. They're doing three treatments on it. Uh, should end up with uh, a very smooth profile and also uh, have a good seal on top of that. Uh, but they produced uh, pavement condition index maps showing that there was no difference in the performance from a neighborhood they'd done in 2014 versus 2015 uh, after three years of, of life. They also had a unique job order contracting mechanism that I thought was uh, noteworthy where they bid they, they basically put together a catalog of treatments and then had a contractor bid a factor to the prices that they'd put in their catalog. So it, it made it very easy for them to estimate what their project costs were gonna be uh, over an eight month period of time. They didn't have to go back and rebid those projects over and over again. So uh, very innovative way of delivering their pavement preservation projects. My final case study was with Pavement Coatings uh, Company. They're based there just outside of San Bernardino, California. Uh, so Don Matthews is gonna talk uh, later in the, pres in, in the uh, order of the conference. Um, it really has a good story. Uh, basically had the idea to initiate trying RAP in pavement preservation treatments and uh, found a way to start doing that and was so successful that uh, they decided to merge companies so that they had a pavement recycling system and a uh, pavement preservation uh, contract applicator under the, under the same umbrella company. Um, so they noted that there are construction nuances using RAP in pavement preservation treatments. Because the slurry seals don't set up as quickly as uh, virgin aggregates, they, they found that rolling those slurry seals is really important. So they put a rubber tire roller on it after about five hours. Uh, so before opening it to traffic, they, they use that rubber tire roller to help seat the aggregates, also align them, and they say it helps uh, set the product uh, a little bit better. Uh, they've also documented similar performance. Balancing production. So they have a, an issue and think this is their pile of coarse material and this is their pile of fine material. And so chip seals are much more popular in that area than slurry seals. So if you're using 25 to 30 pounds a square yard uh, on a chip seal or a scrub seal and you're using uh, 17 or 18 pounds per square yard of material on a, a slurry seal or a micro, uh, if you continue to do that over and over and over again, what happens? You get a lot of fines. And so the issue is uh, trying to find a process that will use those fine materials, just like our friends in the aggregate production facilities where they're saying, we got more screenings than we know what to do with, right? So we're trying to, we're trying to find a way to to use those materials up. And so basically this is a fractionation plant where the materials are uh, run through a crusher and then fed through several series of screens to uh, size the materials the way they want it. Uh, the big question that Doug said he's got to convince clients, they have, the, they have the question, is this aggregate dirty? I'll ask the room, is that aggregate dirty? Okay, let's, let's talk about that. Uh, those aggregate particles have a coating on them, right? And what is that coating? Dirt? It may leave a residue on your hands, I'll agree with you. Uh, but I would argue that that, the, that coating is asphalt materials and rock dust. 
or smaller rock particles that have a coating of asphalt and smaller rock particles on it, right? And in geology class, I learned that that was a conglomerate, right? I, I don't know that much about it, but that's a conglomerate. So he's got a handful of conglomerates in his hand. And so the argument is, is that dirty? Now, why do we care if our aggregate is dirty? It's the number one enemy of a chip seal. Dust, all right? So we don't want dust in our, in our chip seal. That's why we do pre-coating. That's why we run it through the hot mix asphalt plant, pull that dust out of the bag house, then we put three quarters of a percent or one percent on the, on the rock to make it stick to the other sticky stuff, right? But it gets rid of the dust. That's why a lot of folks are, are using pre-coated aggregates. Doug's job is to convince people that that aggregate is not dirty, that it's, it's a different color than the virgin aggregate might be, but it's not detrimental. It's not a deleterious material. It's not something that, that needs to be removed from the stockpile. And so looking at aggregate source tests, the sand equivalent value, the dust content, those parts of your chip seal or uh, slurry specifications that may limit the use of wrap, uh, if you're willing to go down the path of sustainability or cost reduction or more competitive kind of uh, aggregate source in order to get the benefits of doing the material, there are some things you need to look at from a specification standpoint to uh, permit that. So findings. Who owns the wrap? If someone owns the wrap and is willing to use it in a pavement preservation treatment, it's liable to happen. If it's a hot mix asphalt plant that owns the wrap and they only want to use it as a hot mix asphalt additive and they see the value of that uh, asphalt material coating the, those aggregate particles, it may be worth more to them uh, in that form rather than using it as a, a pavement preservation alternative. So as I said before, chip seals require little alteration and they perform comparatively. Slurries and micros, uh, you can get by with a reduced amount of emulsion, although when you, when you extract that material, it's going to have more asphalt in it, uh, just because that, uh, those fine wrap particles have a 6, 6.5%, 7% asphalt content. So there's some uh, perceived benefits in the, in the performance, perhaps, of those treatments because of that increased asphalt percentage. Uh, and it's a rapidly progressing technology. Uh, now, where do I think the uh, state of the practice needs to go? I think just like in trying to characterize wrap asphalts for hot mix asphalt, I think there needs to be some study on what are the chemical components of your wrap asphalt in that pile. Uh, some folks have said, you know, out in the uh, Pacific Southwest, uh, where you get uh, desert climates and a lot of UV damage, it tends to dry that asphalt out a little bit more, enhance that black rock kind of behavior of the wrap. Uh, that's where it works better. Uh, however, over the, the past uh, several months, we found folks in uh, New York and in Pennsylvania that are using wrap chip seals and have been. Just like, just like we said at the beginning, those maintenance guys are are doing it, getting the job done, but they're not documenting it and writing it up in, in uh, national publications. So uh, things are happening out there. RAP is being used in more, more and more applications. So, and the mom and apple pie uh, conclusion, it can be if we, if we manage it properly. And any questions? Il Kerbaz, Virginia DOT. So um, I'm gonna just think out loud. And I'm going to separate two different process, chip, hot applied chip seal versus emulsified chip seal. Okay. So when we talk about wrap, use of wrap in, in chip seals, if we talk about hot applied, then yes, we have to look at into a compatibility. That's the first thing between a hot applied binder and then the wrap binder there. But before that, I wonder, you know, with chip seal application, the Rule of thumb is to have a single layer thick aggregates li laying the, the, on their flattest side. With wrap material, what we see is usually 
there are particles, I'm talking about from a black rock point of view, with um, wrap materials, we have like a small aggregates, wrap aggregates that uh, came together, agglomerated, the correct technical word. Right. word. So if we fed this wrap aggregate to a hot, apply, uh, hot, hot mix plant to pre-code it, aggregates will stick together, gradation will be altered, and so on. Um, and those agglomerated particles will degrade under the traffic. And consequently, it will lead to bleeding. So any, any, any thoughts on that? And I'll also ask one question on emulsified chip seals, too. So uh, there has been a, um, I think from a practical standpoint, going through the fractionation process, that the medium-sized particles become unadhered. So you're left with, say you're shooting for a 5 16 inch chip, you don't really see, if you extract that material, you don't see any change or any added material retained on sieves until you get down to the 30, 50, 100 range of sieves. So that's the size particle that are adhering to those 5 16 inch chips. Uh, and so um, I, think the, I, th I think your point is valid, but I think the, the size of particle that would be available to break down is, is negligible almost in that in that chip seal structure. Okay. So for uh, emulsify. Uh, but there sorry. have been there have been instances some people are cautious of doing like a double chip with wrap aggregates in both areas because you're putting more asphalt down. So they're saying that second layer of chip seal if you're doing a double chip, you need to short your shot rate on the second application of of liquid. Does that make sense? A little bit well, that's I'm saying that right. That's, I mean, for hot applied, it won't be a black rock. There would be some uh, blending mechanism going on in there. But for emulsified chip seals, I don't think uh, what usually we use 80, uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit for hot applied, uh, sorry, emulsified chip seals. At that temperature, I don't think binders binders will blend uh, to uh, to extent. Um, for emulsified chip seals, so what you're recommending is f to fractionate the wrap before apply using it for chip Absolutely. seals. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. That's all. Thank you. My name is Paul Brown. I have just a really good question. Like, why in the world would a DOT ever give away its wrap pile? Because if I'm a hot mix producer, you'll never see a, a, a chip seal with a wrap pile because it doesn't make any sense for competitors to give product to a competitor. <clears throat> If more states acted like New Mexico, would it be better or worse? So uh, you're asking me to put my DOT hat back on. Uh, I would tell you as a maintenance guy that I don't need more waste pits out there that my folks have to manage, just from a practicality standpoint. Certainly any report that I would have to write to FHWA justifying where I use my materials that they would have to review and comment on uh, would be an added step, and I'd worry about whether my whether my methods were going to be approved or not. So I know how the industry evolved into uh, contractors owning the wrap materials that they took up, and I don't know if it's better or worse. I'm I'm going to uh, refrain from answering your questions with just uh, <laughs> useless information attached to the side. How so when you're running the, do, when you fractionate this, do you just throw away the, the gradation specs and the dust spec? Or, I mean, how, how, how does it, how can that meet that with, with, I mean, I don't even know how you meet the dust requirement. So there are two ways of running a gradation on that material. One is to run it as a wash gradation without extracting it, and the other way would be to extract it and measure the gradation on the, on the materials after you've review, removed the uh, asphalt materials and there does ha there are two specifications say for a slurry seal microsurfacing with Los Angeles County they recognize that those particles are going to be conglomerates and they're going to run differently through a wash gradation which is basically how they're doing their design as compared to what you're actually getting with an extracted gradation 
So I, I guess just your personal opinion, Greg. Like when when you take if we're going to use this wrap, and we're gonna we're gonna first we're gonna we we'll have to sort it because we don't ever even do that when we're putting it in hot mix. Um, we've got to uh, it's it's really going to be controlled. We're going to possibly wash it. We're going to make sure it passes gradation. Are we really going to save money by doing that when you have to do so much work with the wrap? I, I think you can. I think I think in the right economic climate where somebody's getting uh, basically a waste material that they're able to then screen and sell for 20 something dollars a ton as compared to virgin aggregate being delivered for 35 or 40 dollars a ton in the case of San Bernardino County I think they are able to uh, save some money so it's you know it's got to be the right market it's got to be uh, feasible for you. I mean, some counties are having contractors turn over the millings to them when they get when they get the road finished. They're, they've been using them as shoulder materials, pipe bedding for years, and and things like that. So it's uh, in the right economical circumstances. I think you can save money. I, I don't think you will in every circumstance. And for instance, Los Angeles pays more for their wrap slurry seal materials to be placed than they do for the virgin aggregate materials to be placed. So it's it's really about sustainability and and reusing that material for them. So well, I, I'm an emulsion guy. So we learned years ago that we need to treat our black rock same as we do our white rock relative to fractionation and gradation. I understand also in a hot applied chip seal that there may be some temperature, I think the gentleman in the back was alluding to, some temperatures in the liquid that would allow the asphalt that's on the stone to be uh, reincorporated as, as a function of temperature. Uh, I, I wonder, um, and, 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 and emulsion breaks to the finer material, so that's why we say dust is a, a problem. But I wonder when a, a wrap stone is is crushed and graded did these folks change their emulsion formula any and and i'm a little i'm i'm a little torn there because if if it's a solid coated stone which wrap will not be because once you break it there's right. exposed virgin right. material on a solid coated stone you have a, a delayed uh break because the emulsion's not touching the 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 uh, you know the ionic transfer in, on the stone is not there. Right. But did they? And and I would say once you fractionate it and grade it, there's probably more virgin surface than coated surface. And if they didn't change their emulsion formula, I would think that proves that. So did they make any changes in their emulsion formula relative to emulsifier level? to accommodate the breaking of the emulsion to the wrap versus virgin? So another politically correct answer, uh, that it's proprietary uh, from an emulsion supplier perspective. Um, a man willing to answer a question, perhaps? Mike Hemsley with Paragon Technical Services. You guys saw that I was referenced in there. Um, yes, of course, we changed the formulation to adjust it accordingly, um, but our our criteria still remains the same, whether it's a virgin aggregate or if it's a, a wrap, uh, a wrap or wrap asphalt coated aggregate. So either way, we're, we're, we're formulating to specs. So we have a target mix time, target break time, uh, cohesion, uh, set and cure. So as long as we're meeting those variables, uh, you adjust your formulation of your emulsion accordingly. And you also adjust your aluminum the mineral filler additive percentages a little bit to provide wetting agents and and uh, set control uh, along with that so yes there are some thank you mike okay um this has been a really great discussion um <laughs>